Okay, I wanted to do a little bit of a presentation walking tour of this Planet Junior B8G and uh, with focus on the transmission, which is a Borg Warner. So the hood on both the B8Gs that I got, both of them have a damaged, truncated, modified hood because they've switched from an earlier Briggs with it fuel tank was behind and it all fit under the hood these didn't fit um, so yeah this one is 30, I'm blocking the light 33 5307 and the B8G uses an enclosed gear transmission uh, T92 so this is a Borg Warner transmission it's got three forward speeds in reverse and uh, had a look online there weren't any good walkthroughs and I've got the other one apart on the bench so I thought I would put a little bit of info out there for anyone who's curious or has one of these to rebuild in the Planet Junior the drive from the Briggs there's a six to one reduction unit which I think is a planetary, but maybe it's a spur gear reduction unit. I haven't opened one yet. And then it belt drives with a, a ten, idler tensioner, belt drives this input shaft on the uh, transmission unit. And then we'll see how that gets reduced through the transmission. Third gear in the transmission is uh, lockout or not lockout, but uh, direct drive. So that if you, you gear down your Briggs six to one here, there's a little bit of a pulley reduction. I think this is a four inch. And that one's about seven or eight, I think. So there's reduction there, but then through the transmission, it's two reduction ratios and direct drive. And then here there's a final drive, which is a roller chain enclosed, but not sealed in a sheet metal case for the final drive. And that goes down to a reversing pawl mechanism in each wheel, which might be the topic for a later video when I have those apart and figured out. But uh, in both of these tractors seem to be working, but uh, it's a cool little transmission and looking it up online, there are a lot of them in use. They're used in Speedex and a bunch of other uh, garden tractors. It's really quite compact. There are variants that are um, direct mount. So instead of being this one's called the cross drive variant where it's got a secondary an additional bearing added in here for uh, to handle the what's that called like the overhung load of the belt and it's a big beefy uh, roller bearing. It's really nice. And then on the output shaft, output side of this one, it's currently in neutral. And this one's got damage where the key tore out some of the, uh, and that's not showing up very well. I'll get a better shot of it later when it's at a different angle. But it's still working, but the, uh, the half moon or the woodruff key seems to have shorn off part of the output shaft here. It probably slipped and chipped and dragged. But uh, anyway, I'll uh, gonna take the top cover off. The shift pattern is not shown in the top cover. Uh, in the case of the Planet Junior, it's on the back of the hood. Um, but it is, well, my cover's not in well enough. And numbers wise, both of these are marked uh, T92 and the cover is marked 148. This cover is marked N4. The other cover is marked N6. And this one, the, this one, the case and the cover are both marked N6. Whereas the one on the bench case is N5. Cover is N4 in terms of casting marks. If anyone's trying to figure this stuff out. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna. There's a circlip that I've already removed and then the keyway here uh, I had this off previously and I think I used a puller to pull it straight 
feels like I could almost get it off by hand, but uh, it's got a little bit of stickiness, so I'll probably use the puller just to not do any harm, and then I'll take this cover off in just a sec. Okay, so got this loose with the puller, comes right off. So this pulley has this machined relief, and then has a machined shoulder that has a hardened steel race probably shrink fit onto it and then has a keyway broached into it so pretty pretty fancy part in a lot of regards and uh, this one's still a really good snug fit my other one's got a that one's got a little bit of a wobble to it but uh, I'm sure it still works fine so then over here that um, this substantial roller bearing you can just see the rollers there. It uh, sits in this bolt-on shoulder, which we can remove in a second, and uh, it supports any overhung loads and torque loading on that uh, on the input side. So, beefed up input side for uh, cross-drive applications. I put a little witness mark just in paint but then I realized afterwards that there are other telltales that you can use to position it. For instance, uh, the way it's mounted on the Planet Junior, this is, a, this is a drain hole, and we'll see there is a, yeah, you can just make it out there at the back. Let me get a pointer. All right, there, that is an oil passage that goes into the gearbox and is periodically going to drop a couple drops of oil into the uh, roller bearings and then if it accumulates too much in here it'll eventually run out this which runs down the drain hole on the back you can't see it in the shadow there Second. So if you're looking at your um, input side and there's oil scum all beneath it, you can see that the actual installed orientation is uh, a little bit more inclined so that the drain really is behind the pulley right down there. And so it's perfectly normal for these to have oil film running all down this uh, so this is actually how it would be draining. Really is a gravity drain. So I'm wondering if these two rings on the face here would have had a felt or something else packed into them originally. And I might try to make some felt seals for it because that would seal up pretty well against the machined interface of this. Uh, it would help to keep the oil in the roller bearing where it's supposed to be and at least when it drained it would uh, go down the drain path rather than getting onto the pulley and eventually into the, the V groove in the pulley. So that's that. Next step is, this is the last of the fasteners on the cover. I'm pretty sure it'll stay in place. So the cover with the gear selector has two selector forks, two rods, and then uh, at the end here what we have is uh, a detent mechanism to uh, help with gear placement. I'm just going to set that down for a second. These have quite a long uh, shift rod, obviously, you can see on that one as well, because you need to be able to reach the uh, gear selector from the handlebar position when this same transmission is used in uh, lawn tractors and automobiles. It usually has a shift shifter about a third as long. Now, I think I better change my uh, angle.
angle to get some better lighting in here. Just a minute. Okay, so with the three bolts out, this bearing holder comes off. You can see a sealed bearing behind, but also the oil gallery that runs into, and I think it picks up, there's a perforation in the first part of the on the input shaft and so that's where we're getting and then the, the shaft itself is is drilled I think or maybe maybe has a channel machined lengthwise and no, I think it's it's drilled through at any rate um, this there's a new version of this part which is available with a shaft seal and I wanted to give a shout out to the folks at Olympic gear who are making stuff for these transmissions and including making all new transmissions. Parts are available, they're doing rebuild services, and you can get all the specs so that after I'd gone to the trouble of counting all the teeth and calculating gear ratios, well, here they are. Um, I'll try to get a good stable image of this. It seems to be picking up fine from the LCD, so. These diagrams are all at, what's Olympic Gears URL? Come on. Uh, show me the toolbar, olympicgear.com. So that's pretty cool for a transmission that has been around since the Crosley car. Second World War, 1940s, easy, and uh, yeah, to be able to get parts or send one away for rebuild, very neat. Uh, and I'm, I might actually inquire about getting the new version because obviously one of the flaws here is that with that uh, drip lube to this outer bearing and then the drainage groove, well, you do get oil leaving the case and dripping down the outside of it and uh, putting a shaft seal on would fix that. There's also, I believe, a better shaft seal on this uh, output side in the new variant. So this one doesn't look bad. Um, I've taken the notes of, at least from my model, this roller bearing is a Torrington roller bearing marked B2410. The input bearing here is marked MRC, made in the USA, 205SZZ, and then on the output side, tucked in here behind a circlip, is a Fafner 204PP. So um, for sure you could get these from Olympic, and I think they have updated variants that don't require modification to the transmission but give you better oil sealing although um, I'm pretty sure that they have a new part for this that I saw uh, pictures of in, on their website so I might look into that in order to get a proper uh, oil seal in there but back to the transmission we have our input shaft currently it's in neutral there's no connection between the output shaft and the input shaft and the lockout for third gear is that this collar runs down onto those teeth and it locks the two together. So that's neutral and that's third. And in third, it's one turn in, one turn out. And the, the side gears lay shaft in the bottom are out of the equation. We can't see much this but there so there's a, a lay shaft in the bottom with a cluster gear that gives us one ratio when we slide this one it matches up with its partner down there and now we have currently we're in that ratio is there's my bad diagram of so in that case we've got a 17 tooth driving a 28 and then power out is 
coming back through the 23 into another 23 and out the output shaft. And so that is... I think that's this one second, which I calculated at 0 0.60, which is like uh, 1.7 to 1, something like that. Um, and then the, the next variant is if you slide that one back into neutral, instead of engaging with the 23, this one comes back to float. And then you slide this 30 tooth onto the 16, and then you have 17 by 28 and 16 by 30 and then out and that is the first gear with the bigger reduction so we put this one back in neutral so everything's pre-wheeling and then sorry you can see a smaller golly that's mediocre visibility at best but as i bring this across there now i've got it where one turn on the input side it's being geared down significantly it's gearing down one step here and then it's coming back gearing down again at another step here and so the output is driven significantly more slowly and that step is about three three point two to one i believe and then reverse uses um, an extra idler off to the side but the idler is almost one to one and so the reverse gear is really close to first it's again about three to one so yeah behold the beauteous mess of my diagram i would recommend using the cleaner diagrams at olympic here's the cross-sectional and the one that they call engineering specs is the one that has it's just case dimensions, but it has the gear ratios. So first gear, 3.294 to 1. Second gear, 1.721 to 1. And third gear, 1 to 1. They don't mention the reverse gear, but it's very close to first. So that's that. And then the one with the... Uh, yeah, I could have verified it all, but they don't give gear uh, tooth counts in this uh, parts diagram. But yeah, pretty amazing that they've uh, still got that much support for these. And uh, gosh, yeah, I think that's about all I have to say about it. Cool mechanism. The selector forks have a detent with, uh, there's a ball detent, and there's also an interlock plunger in between the two of them so that you have two sprung balls, one pushing in here on this shaft, one pushing in here on this shaft, and then floating between the two shafts is an interlock, and uh, in neutral it's got a bit more space, but as soon as you shift one of the rods uh, forward or aft, it locks out the other one, and so that you can see that it's in neutral now, and the the shift, what would you even call that? It's kind of like a ball-shaped tip on the shift lever. Um, apparently there is a, uh, most of the problems, shifting problems that develop with these transmissions can be traced to wear on this uh, kind of lozenge, flat lozenge-shaped selector mechanism, and you can there's a pin you can pull, you can take it apart, you can build it up with, uh, by welding and file it back, machine it back to its original spec. And uh, I found some information for that online too. So, eminently serviceable, pretty cool little machine. And it can handle like 50 pound feet input. The specs are on uh, Olympic site, but basically, uh, you know, Small car, small tractor, way oversized for this. These Briggs motors put out, uh, these Briggs engines are like five, they're not even five horsepower, they're like three horsepower or something. At any rate, this transmission could take the output of 
six or eight of these engines, even geared down as it is through that gear reducer. So yeah, little beefy tractor, little big beefy transmission, pretty cool. Hope this is useful to someone someday.